It takes a certain amount of courageous moxie to pummel you with the deliriously hammering force and dizzying sense of rhythm that a mathcore album would have, but also a certain amount of generosity to sub out the low-end skull-crushing bombast and replace it with a large bag of candy corn and milk bottle gums. The first track of Fibs by composer Anna Meredith, titled Sawbones, overwhelms me a little bit with unapologetically bright sugary colours and gummy textures that make me feel the need to whip out a pair of sunnies and a large bowl of dry wheat bix to counteract. The result is pretty damn special, by the way, but I would not try to dismiss that it has the tenacity, or at least the spirit, of a hard-fisted prog record that channels the spirit of Ben Weinman from Dillinger Escape Plan, but if he was wearing a Willy Wonka costume. Polyphonic composition seems to be Meredith's strong point on this album, and it makes sense given her work prior. A bit of a gem from 2016, Varmints, which I listened to the year after Young Bean Rick dropped his first ever Albums of the Year list ever, but also that list did not have Varmints on it, and I regretted that, because it didn't take even the naivest version of me very long to realise how creatively subversive Anna Meredith's knack for composition actually is when she's working with a ton of sounds that are fairly MIDI-esque, but her ability to sequence crescendos and group certain textures together make the songs sound large and important, like they're meant to soundtrack vital turning moments in an anxious and incalculable coming-of-age film. Oh. Fibs is less texturally loaded and really sticks to a consistent range of tones, which makes the album seem a lot cleaner and simpler on the surface, but it doesn't stop the songs from pounding any harder onto your head, like angry pistons in the engine of a clown vehicle. The way that each song gradually layers and layers, noticeably with ascending melodies, evokes upward movements, growth movements. It sounds like music perfect for a competition to build a rocket out of recyclable materials in 10 minutes. It has this magic pixie dust that encourages creativity wherever it goes, however the chord progressions duck in dodge in directions that you don't exactly expect. One of these moments is even within the first five seconds of starting the record, signalling that Meredith isn't here to play games. I mean, she does play games, the entire album sounds like a bit of a game, but within the context of that game, she's not here to play games. Above all, it even just sounds like a nice pop album with lovely pop tunes, even if they take those strange rhythmic and structural detours. Killjoy really does sound like her flirtatious phone call answer back to Vanessa Carlton's A Thousand Miles. Moon Moons is built upon string embellishments, plucking and bowing that sounds tense and playful. Limpet is the album's wannabe rock tune and still manages to keep you guessing, whip its tablecloth away, yell psych you thought. The album seems to draw you back in for a hug with the kitten-eyed ribbons, which will have your heart melting like a pop school in the middle of the pool changing rooms. The high-pitched chirping actually sounds like it's trying to communicate with you, but unfortunately I did not take synthesizer as a language subject in school, so I don't know what it's saying there. And then you get Paramore. Serious contender for Song of the Year, a culmination of all the blissful madness that you've been dished out since the start of the record, and escalates to a point of euphoria similar to when I tried aloe vera drink for the first time. Fibs is an unquestionable stunner of a record that gets so wonderfully lost in its imagination, except I only wish I could imagine things half as strongly as what's here. It's usually Crash Bandicoot playing the bagpipes, 